Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending this talk. And uh, today we will talk. Actually, this is an old topic: how to scale HDFS. So finally, we can manage billions of files. So we know in this world uh, we have a lot of HDFS clusters managing a lot of data. And uh, in the past, actually, HDFS uh, actually works pretty well and for managing all those kind of large data sets. And, uh, but when people put more and more data into HDFS, especially when you want to use the HDFS, the single data lake, to manage all your data, including all those kind of small files, small blocks. And uh, we all know HDFS has those kind of scalability issue because the name node has just uh, a single node hold all the metadata in memory. So today we will talk about our efforts uh, trying to use some distributed storage schemes to scale the HDFS, and finally we can achieve better scalability. About us, actually us, uh, Nicholas is currently in Hong Kong, so us is actually only about me. <laughs> uh, Nicholas, uh, let me still introduce Nicholas. I think we have the YouTube video, right? So Nicholas will watch it afterwards. So. Uh, he's a software engineer in Hortonworks, and uh, he got his PhD in University of Maryland. And uh, he's a very early uh, engineer working on HDFS since 2007. Maybe six, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, he's currently actively working on the Apache Redis. Uh, we will also introduce more details about uh, Apache Redis later. This is a Raft uh, library, which we will use it to for the uh, data replication in the new HDFS architecture. Uh, about myself, I'm also a software engineer in Hortonworks, uh, working on HDFS for almost five years. Yeah, and uh, also I'm currently working on the Apache Redis. So uh, this is the big picture. Um, so basically, we are talking about how to scale the HDFS. So Finally, we cannot just uh, focus on one part, let's say the storage layer, or say only the, about the block storage. So in this talk, we will also spend some time review all our previous talk, uh, work on the HDFS scalability issue. So if you look at the outline, we will also uh, talk, uh, give a general review about the namespace uh, scaling, that is the partial namespace in memory work. And uh, the storage container architecture actually has already been covered by some other talks. For example, the, the C block talk yesterday, and also the Ozone talk maybe last year. So basically, we will also review the whole architecture because this is the, the, the finally this will be the big picture about the, the our view about the next generation of HDFS with better uh, scalability. And also, the most important part is the current development status. Uh, we will put more details about the, how to use Raft for the data replication there. So uh, let's first uh, review the current HDFS architecture and see where the scalability bottleneck lies on. OK. Yes. So here, uh, in the current HDFS, we know uh, we have the storage layer that is about the blocks. All the blocks are, uh, are stored in the, on the data nodes. And uh, then we have the name node. Name node capture all the metadata, including the namespace that is about the directories and the files. So this is like a tree. And also we have a map about the blocks. So mapping from the block to the block locations. And uh, peri uh, periodically, the data nodes will send the heartbeats to the name node. So uh, with, by using the heartbeats, name node can mind the health status of the, uh, all the data nodes. And also, uh, every several hours, every data node will send all those kind of full block reports to the, data node, uh, to the name node. And uh, sometimes we depend on this kind of full block report to fix some minor consistency issue. And also, the block reports also includes the incremental block report. So we know the current HDFS uses the chain replication uh, this kind of protocol uh, required to write in pipeline, right? To so replicate the data. And also every data node, after receiving the, the blocker replica, it needs to send a report to the name node 
to claim, okay, I hold this kind of uh, block replica. And uh, we will talk about the, its issue and uh, the current improvements uh, already have uh, already done in the community. Uh, this is, uh, let me just. Uh, okay, this is the HDFS layering uh, picture. So actually in this picture, we not only uh, just uh, uh, depict the, the, the block uh, storage, the block pool concept, we also bring in the federation concept. So if you look at the, the lower part, this is uh, still about the block storage. So but compared with the, the last picture, actually here we have bringing the block pool concept. So each block pool is associated with a single name service. I will say you can just uh, uh, understand this as a, this kind of a namespa uh, namespace, right? And uh, finally, by using the H uh, HDFS federation, we actually can support multiple namespaces and even including some foreign namespaces and uh, the kind who are used the VueFS to visit HDFS. So actually this uh, design has its own advantage. So basically we know uh, all the metadata are captured uh, in the name node memory. And uh, the biggest advantage for this is like, uh, it's uh, very simple actually. So uh, then also holding all the metadata, including the namespace uh, information and all the block information in the memory, you can easily achieve some good performance. Uh, this good performance including uh, the low latency and also uh, not bad, this kind of uh, um, uh, parallelism. So basically uh, in current HDFS, usually you can achieve like uh, 60,000 to 100,000 tasks um, per second. And also usually the latency can be controlled with those kind of milliseconds. And uh, if, uh, let's say, you don't put a lot of small files or small blocks into HDFS, you always like uh, control your application, don't abuse your HDFS, you write large files, then you can achieve like uh, several hundred petabytes this kind of uh, uh, scale. But unfortunately, currently, um, more and more, in more and more use cases, people start uh, writing small files into HDFS. And uh, we know the name nodes hold all the information in memory, and uh, we are, uh, the name node currently is written in Java. And uh, currently, all the information is, uh, we don't have those kind of off-heap implementation inside HDFS, which, so, which means you cannot just uh, keep increasing the memory, the heap size in the name node. And uh, usually like uh, the largest uh, name node heap size may be just uh, 100 or 200, let's say several hundred gigabytes. And uh, for managing those size of the HDFS or say the name node, it's usually very, very hard. It's very, very hard to tune the GC parameters. And uh, this is actually, this part is mainly about the namespace part. This is really completely related to our design choice to keep everything in memory in the side of the name node. But of course, federation can, can be used to mitigate this kind of issue. So for example, in Twitter we know they have deployed this kind of very large cluster by using the federation. And they can achieve much, much better uh, scalability. But the issue for the federation is like, uh, it's not that easy to, to manage. So you actually, your administration team should be like a very experienced. And uh, also you need to develop some extra tools or those kind of uh, client side applications to finally can uh, just uh, utilize this kind of federated HDFS. Another scalability issue, this is a totally related to the block storage. So the biggest pain maybe here is about the block reports, and uh, two types of blocks reports here. The first part is the, the full block report. So the full block report means like uh, every couple of hours, um, when you start the, the whole cluster, and uh, after a while the name, the, the data node, every data node actually, will just uh, send uh, all the block information 
starting that data node to the name node. Um, in the past, it's usually just uh, send one sent all the information was sent by one RPC, and the current days, like uh, we have this kind of, uh, we can separate the full block rate report into multiple RPC messages. And uh, usually, uh, following part, this brings us several of these kind of uh, issues. So first say, when you like, start HDFS, uh, a lot of data nodes just started to send the full block report. And uh, to process each full block report, the name node has to like, uh, cost a lot of memory and uh, just uh, hold this kind of write lock, which is uh, maybe a glo global lock. And uh, name node actually can do nothing but just uh, process a single full block report. And uh, a lot of effort has already been put in to this kind of optimizing this part. So in the past, we try to randomize the start uh, full block report sending time from every data node. And later, we add those kind of uh, full block report lists. And uh, later, we put also a lot of effort to stabilize that kind of feature. And uh, anyway, so I think during the last several years, a lot, uh, the community has made a lot of progress here. So I think currently maybe full block report has been already been working fine, uh, but still a lot of work is still in progress. For example, we are trying to separate even the uh, full block report for a single volume into like uh, segments, and uh, the change for that work is like actually we have different data structures in branch two and the trunk for this kind of uh, uh, internal data structure inside of the name node. So I think that work is still very challenging here. And uh, besides the full block report, there is an incremental full, uh, block report from the data node to the name node. So basically, um, theoretically, so if you, you are writing a block in your HDFS and uh, you are using the chain replication, this kind of uh, uh, protocol, and ideally you hope, okay, all the data nodes involved in this writing pipeline can keep the consistency, keep the durability, and don't bother the name node. But currently in our protocol, actually, uh, these data nodes can well still send the incremental block reports to the name node. So which means the name node will get involved in almost every block writing this kind of uh, process. So which means the name node need to handle a lot, a lot of RPC caused by the incremental uh, block reports. Um, I, I remember maybe last year, Nixus has done some improvement on this part so that the data node can batch the incremental block reports. Uh, but still, this is still a big pain if we want to scale the HDFS further. So uh, let's talk about the partial namespace in memory. This is a very, very simple review of our previous work. So actually, this work has already um, been there a couple of years. So um, the general idea here is like um, we are trying to use a key value store to represent the namespace tree. So in the name node in currently, uh, because we, anyway we can hold everything in the memory, then we use a tree-like data structure. And uh, by using the partial namespace in memory, then we need to convert it into a flat key value of this kind of data structure. And by after this kind of conversion, it is possible then you can keep part of this kind of uh, namespace on your disk. You don't need to hold everything in memory now. And uh, now you can bring in some good cache strategy. And the memory, the in-memory part actually will be your hot working part. And uh, this work has already been prototyped and uh, demoed in a couple of talks and uh, conferences. So for example, in 2013, we actually have this kind of demo in the hack. And uh, 2015, we have a talk in the Hadoop Senate. And uh, even last year, we have this, kind of, uh, we also mentioned this ongoing work. So still currently, we are still working on this feature, but uh, still need some time, I guess. But this seems in some pro good progress. So let's talk about the storage layer now. Um, this part work is mainly about the container, let's say storage container architecture because nowadays we have too many containers. 
<laughs> storage containers. Uh, generally, storage container is just a storage unit. If you attend the talk uh, given by Anu yesterday, you should already have a very clear big picture about the storage container. So basically, you can just treat it as a, like a simple, this kind of key value store. And, uh, in, and each storage container is stored in those kind of data nodes. And uh, inside the, the, the storage container is actually self-described. So basically, it contains all the data, and also it contains some local block map to map the block IDs to the local block locations. And uh, the size of the storage container can be like uh, configurable, but it's usually larger than the current HDFS block size. So the current HDFS block size is 128 megabytes by default. And uh, for a storage container, we usually suggest uh, like uh, several gigabytes, like uh, four gigabytes or like uh, 32 gigabytes. Okay. So by bringing this storage container, we actually have the, uh, this kind of uh, potential cap capability to finally distribute the block map and to the data nodes. So kind of now instead of capturing all the kind of block to block location, this kind of map inside the memory of the name node, we now can push a lot of this kind of information directly to the data nodes. The data node we are actually maintaining the, stor the storage containers and just use the storage container to track the location of all the blocks. And for the central node, we can still, of course, use it. Uh, maybe we can still use name node, but in our current work, we are bringing another central node called uh, the SCM, Storage Container Manager. And the Storage Container Manager can only need to capture the location of the storage containers. So it's more like uh, you just convert this kind of block to block location map to uh, two level this kind of mapping. So one of the first level is a container to container location. And the second layer is the block to the container layer. And the second layer with, uh, which contains more information now can be distributed to the data nodes. And now, if we still ask all the data nodes to send the heartbeats and the container reports to our central node, let's say that's called the storage container manager, then this kind of container report will be much more efficient compared with the original block report. Let's say, because this is a very simple calculation, right? So originally, you have that many data, several hundred petabytes of data, and you divide it maybe by two, 128 megabytes. And if you have a lot of small files, small blocks, maybe each block is only several megabytes, then you have a huge amount of metadata need to be sent from the data nodes to the name nodes by using the full block report. And now you only need to ask the data nodes to send the container reports to the SCM. And you actually divide the total size of your data by maybe 32 meg, uh, gigabytes, right? And also the storage container actually can have the, this kind of capability to have a better measurement of all the small files, uh, let's say small blocks, small objects. So actually you have the, uh, this kind of capability to compact all your data inside a single storage container. And we can actually separate the SCM from the current name node. Uh, the name node now can only uh, care about the namespace tree. And when a client comes, it can still talk about the files, directories, use all the original HDFS APIs directly to the name node. And the name node will still, for example, if you want to create a file, the name node can still say, hey, you can allocate uh, this kind of block for this file and return some block ID to the client. And by using this kind of block ID, the client actually can directly talk to the storage container layer, or more specifically, it will talk to the, this kind of uh, SCM. And SCM will finally help the client to find the corresponding data nodes to write the real data. 
And in this way, we actually separate out the storage layer from the HDFS name node. And to, so that we can actually have a much, much better scalability. And also, rem uh, remember, we still have the partial namespace in memory work. And in that work, we can still use that work to scale the current namespace tree, right? So in this way, finally, I think we, by doing some calculation, we can easily achieve maybe several billion files managed by HDFS. Ah, so this is some simple calculation, like uh, how, to, how many blocks we can store in a storage container and how many containers we can store in this cluster. And to one trillion, okay, so this is a, uh, Nicholas put this number there. Uh, yeah, it's uh, optimistic, but I think we can finally achieve there. So, uh, if you look at the storage container, actually, uh, it can be used just uh, separately to finally provide an uh, object store. So this is the ozone, and uh, this is the ongoing work in current HDFS. If you want to watch this work, it's HDFS 7240. And I think Anu Chitenja has already given a lot of talks about the ozone and uh, the, this kind of object store. So I just borrowed some content from their previous slides. So basically, Ozone will provide an interface similar to S3. So it's a just a key value, it's an object store. And uh, the key part is still the SCM, the storage containers, and also it has the key space manager. So basically, we need to map also the key to the containers. So all the data, the objects, just as similar with like uh, the, in the, in, 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 in the size we just mentioned uh, before, it's like the blocks were stored in the, these kind of storage containers. And of course, the, uh, the, the, the detailed storage implementation actually can be replaced based on your use case. And basically, we actually can use this kind of uh, uh, storage container layer to achieve much better scalability. But here, the new challenge is like, uh, we need to track the mapping between the keys to the storage containers. And uh, currently, in HDFS 7240, we are using a KSM, Key Space Manager, to do this kind of uh, mapping, to track this mapping. And Basically, if you only use a single node to do this mapping, you still can just hit some scalability upper limit. And to solve this kind of problem, you actually have several ways. For example, you can bring in this kind of hash partitioning or range partitioning to finally achieve, uh, to, to, to attack this kind of challenge. And we are currently use the Raft consensus protocol for data replication. So currently, the storage container will be our basic replication unit. And instead of using the chain replication, we are using the Raft protocol. Uh, the good thing here by using the Raft is like, um, it's, it's a well-known protocol. It has already been proved. It has already been adopted by a lot of projects. And it has all the leader election, all those kind of features there. We can directly use it. We only need to add some new features like uh, writing pipeline, or those kind of uh, maybe multi-raft data or something. And we can talk about, discuss all those kind of details later. And, uh, but here the change is like this. So in raft, the raft protocol requires no gap in the raft logs. And so which means if you bring a new raft peer, in your replication. To bootstrap that kind of new peer, you need to copy all the previous data to the new peer. And if you use a raft group to replicate a lot of data, so which means this kind of bootstrap process will be long. To quicken this kind of process, we also just bring in this kind of close the container concept. So which means if a container, if a storage container has already reached its size limit, for example, four gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. 
Then we move the storage container out of the wrapped management and treat it as an immutable storage container. And then we can use the, maybe the original these kind of uh, uh, policies currently used by HDFS to manage the durability of the storage container, the closed storage containers. Actually, this, is, uh, this picture is uh, still the same idea. And also, yeah, the good, I, the good part for the closed storage container is that it's immutable. And because it's immutable, actually, you can now bring in the eraser coding as your storage scheme. So, which means for closed storage container, which maybe usually store your code data, you bring in eraser coding here and you can also achieve better storage efficiency. Okay, this is the big picture after we put partial namespace in memory and the stock storage container architecture together. So we have the physical storage underneath and on top we have all the data nodes with block containers or say the storage containers and we have the KSM and SCM as the container management services. And on top, we can run our HDFS by starting our name node. And also you can just provide this kind of object store interfaces to start your ozone. And uh, even you can maybe just redesign your edge base by adopting the storage container layers. Yeah, let's talk about the current development status. So HDFS 7240, this is the current work, uh, in progress work about the storage container. So it already has 235 subtasks and uh, 180 already resolved. And we have a lot of contributors. The work is still going on and we have made already good progress. And uh, this is about the C block work. Uh, Anu has already given a good talk yesterday about this work and uh, also uh, almost there. And uh, yeah, Hortonworks has already adopted the C blocks for its internal queue environment. And more details about the raft. So yeah, this is a, this slide is a, actually a general introduction about the raft consensus protocol in case you don't just uh, you are not familiar with this algorithm. So it's, uh, uh, it's uh, actually, uh, fundamentally, it's the uh, same idea like a Paxos, but it's uh, more understandable and uh, it's widely adopted by the industry. And uh, for us, because maybe we are the first use case to use Raft directly to do the data replication, I mean, the data replication means like uh, for this kind of HDFS, you need to have a very high requirement on the throughput for the data ingest, right? So, which means we need to add some features on top of the standard Raft library uh, protocol. So currently we put the, the writing pipeline, this kind of pipeline, this kind of features on top of the um, Raft standard algorithm. So which means the client actually can just achieve much better throughput while sending the data to the Raft leader. And also for the Raft log replication, uh, actually we also bring in this kind of pipeline to achieve much better throughput. And uh, for our Raft work, actually we, are, we want to finally provide a general Raft library. So currently we create a new Apache incubating project called Apache Redis. And uh, in this library we make all the state machine implementation or Raft log implementation and also the RPC implementation pluggable so that uh, some other projects can finally utilize this library. So some use case like this, for example, if you want a new HA solution, or say you want some leader election, 
And uh, instead, maybe for, for example, for HA solution, even for the current HDFS, maybe you can use this Apache Redis library to replace the QGM. And in this way, you can achieve multiple, I mean, more than two name nodes working together. And uh, let's say for leader election. So we, uh, later we plan to provide this kind of a zookeeper-like API inside of the Apache Redis. So maybe you can try to use the Apache Redis to replace your Apache Zookeeper service to achieve the simple leader election functionality. And uh, by the way, Apache Redis has already been used in HDFS 7240. Uh, this is some current development status, and uh, we have already uh, got our first alpha release uh, last month, and uh, also we have a, a kind of uh, large contributor list, and uh, you are very welcome to contribute on this project. All right, yeah, I think that's all for the talk. Any questions? So I mean zookeeper. So basically, uh, in some use case, I talked with like uh, some other people. Uh, using zookeeper, you need to have a separate service started, right? And uh, some people use zookeeper just uh, for like leader election. Of course, you can you always use zookeeper to for like uh, put, you put your configuration there or share some other metadata, right? So, but if you only need a leader election, why not just uh, get rid of some extra service? and uh, bringing a library in your code, right? And uh, you have a self-contained this kind of uh, working code and uh, achieve the leader election. And uh, I think maybe that's attractive for some, for some developers. Yeah. Uh, Quick question. Okay. Yeah. With storage containers, where is file metadata stored? Oh, the storage containers. Yeah, so, Basically, um, the storage containers will also contain the metadata, actually. So if you look at the, this, this picture. So you still, ah, oh, has already been switched. So basically, if you remember, uh, we, you can also have partial, part of your block map in your storage container so that your storage container is actually self-described. So currently, I think in HDFS 7.2.4.0, we are using level DB to capture this part of the metadata. But uh, you can maybe later, if we hit any other performance issues, we can just uh, change that implementation. Yeah. Uh, Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, then try to do the calculation here. So basically the storage layer. So storage layer actually by, use, by distribute all the storage uh, management to the, let's say, the raft groups and by adopting the concept of the closed containers, actually you can achieve much, much better scalability on the storage layer, right? So you no longer just hold all your block map in your memory. And uh, we actually can achieve like uh, maybe like uh, more than 10 times of this kind of uh, scalability improvement currently uh, by using this kind of a uh, distributed storage scheme. Then, but still the bottleneck can be on the namespace part because namespace part will hold all your files and uh, directories. So previously when we do the partial namespace work, uh, we actually can see this kind of a more than 10 times of this kind of a scalability improvement on the, by using the partial namespace on the name node. So without even separating or say distributing the namespace trees. And if you combine these two things together, 
just uh, using the kinds work, we actually can achieve maybe like uh, uh, maybe like uh, 20 or like even much better this kind of uh, scalability improvement. And uh, you can now achieve maybe more than billion file, right? But if we continue this, working on this, let's say maybe we can still distribute the namespace trees. And if we, because we bring in this kind of a namespace, uh, partial namespace, we bring in this kind of a new key value, this kind of flat data structure. And if you look at the most recent, this kind of a Hobbs FS work, right? They actually have similar this kind of structure and distributed directly on the NetDB. And they achieve much, much better scalability. Maybe we can borrow the same idea. You can still distribute this kind of key value, uh, this kind of flat structure just for your namespace. Then maybe we can finally completely solve this kind of a namespace scalability issue. And uh, hopefully at that time, we can achieve this billions file, this kind of scalability. <laughs> That's a question very hard to answer. So yesterday in a news talk, he proposed maybe we can merge HDFS 7240 directly into trunk. That's uh, 3.0, right? And 3.0 currently is already in alpha release. So maybe we have a plan to finally get a better release this year. So I think uh, all this kind of work, how to merge all those kind of still on, the dis on discussion in the community. So hopefully we can get into the 3.0. Yeah, but let's see. Hi. <laughs> I, I have a question. So uh, you are adding uh, one more indirect layer by adding the storage container. Right. Uh, do you measure the additional latency by adding that? Uh, oh, latency. Yes. Yes, yes. So and basically, um, I think uh, this is uh, like uh, maybe two parts. Uh, the first part is like uh, for writing small files, let's say. In the current HDFS, of course, you still need to send a RPC, a two RPC first to name nodes. One RPC is about create a file. The second RPC is about allocate a block. Then you, the client will create the writing pipeline, connecting or uh, just contacting the data nodes, the data nodes just contact another data node, finally you get the data, the pipeline set up. And then maybe you just use this pipeline to send uh, small data, right? And actually this uh, strategy may be not good latency for writing small data because you see a lot of this kind of process. And finally, the data node they need to send back the incremental block report to the name node. And at that time, the name node can say, hey, the file has already been created and all the data are there, right? And uh, if you look at the current uh, uh, scheme, um, of course, we actually bring in an extra layer. Uh, but the thing is like you talk to name node still first, create a file, then allocate a block. Then with the new block ID, you directly talk to the storage container layer. This increases latency. But then you use the raft protocol to replicate your data. And if that data is not a big file, let's say, and we care more about the latency, actually you can achieve much better latency here. And uh, so we haven't measured uh, this kind of a latency performance yet. But I, I, I think based on this kind of a, a simple analysis, maybe you will not hit those kind of bad latency at this. And for throughput, actually, we did some simple uh, performance measurement. So currently, with our Redis library, uh, with all those kind of uh, pipeline improvement, we can achieve maybe three-fourths of the current HDFS writing throughput when writing a huge file, let's say a big file. And uh, we are actively working on the further improvement because when we do this kind of performance uh, measurement, we haven't done any optimization in our code yet. So actually we have still have a lot of, lot of room for the further optimization. So I think finally maybe we can achieve also this kind of not bad writing throughput when writing big files. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you everyone.